Uh, news just coming in, the number of dead, uh, Palestinian dead, has risen to 330, if we understand. Let's cross to Gaza, to Yumna El Said, who's live for us there. And Yumna, so we've been hearing about the number, the large number of Israeli fatalities. Uh, tell us what's happened there. Yes, well, Nick, uh, the violent raids, uh, Israeli raids and bombardments over civil, uh, uh, several civilian homes across the Gaza Strip in different areas is intensifying. The violent way, uh, uh, air raids are shaking the Gaza Strip in different areas. Here in Gaza City, many neighborhoods uh, have been targeted, many civilian homes. The last targeting was for Abu Dhabi family home in Beit Hanun, that's in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. 17 people have died only from that or have been killed from that bombardment on their homes. Now, we did uh, see uh, messages being sent to the uh, uh, mobile phones or cell phones of the civilians by the Israeli military telling them to evacuate their homes, especially the homes that uh, are uh, on, on the borders of uh, Gaza from north to south and to go to the uh, central part of Gaza City. But now we're seeing more messages being sent to people who are in Gaza City to still go to the center of Gaza City, like in, in the eastern part of Gaza City and in the western part of Gaza City. Uh, the, uh, the, the bombardments that we're seeing every now and then, uh, the, uh, the the killing of civilians, the bombarding of their homes over their heads, this is really extraordinary. In just 24 hours of the beginning of the launching of the Iron Swords operation towards Gaza, over 330 people have been killed and over 2,000 others have been injured. Uh, Yumna, as we're chatting, we can see images of boats, I think, in the harbour there, just... Uh a blaze, one particular one is a blaze anyway, with smoke spiraling into the sky. I'm not, not sure if you know anything particularly about that, but it's all part of the ongoing assault, I guess. Yes, well, some parts... Now, the bombardments in Gaza, Nick, are literally going uh, in, in different directions at the same time. So some people or uh, some civilians at their homes would get calls to evacuate their homes, while others won't. And the airstrikes would happen at the same time, which is making it very difficult for the civil defense teams, the medical teams, to act rapidly to get to the targeted place uh, since their, their resources and capabilities are very limited. And that's why uh, even though there, there are people who could be under the rubbles of their homes, uh, it's just civilians from that neighborhood who are risking their lives to go and to help them out of the rubble. This is what we have been seeing in the past uh, 24 hours and until now. Uh, Yumna, we need to talk about cause and effect in all of this and uh, how Gazans living under stifling land, air and sea blockade, uh, which has led no small part to what's been happening. And then I can see behind you, I think there's uh, Gazans collecting food. Is that from a, a refugee outpost? What's happening there? Well, here, Nick, I'm in one of the UNRWA schools. Uh, this is a shelter now for displaced uh, Palestinian families. In this school alone, there are over 2,000 people crammed all together in just 40 uh, classrooms of this school. Now, these families here, they have fled their homes because their homes were either by the borders and they were told and asked to evacuate or their homes were uh, targeted and destroyed in the past hours. So basically, Ottawa has opened uh, 44 shelters and schools all together in different areas of the Gaza Strip. We have over uh, 20,000 people in these shelters now. Of course, when you're going to talk about humanitarian conditions in these schools, these people have fled with almost 
nothing. Some of them brought uh, in very little belongings, very little amounts of clothes for their children, and others had to flee quickly, uh, running for their lives. Most of the people here came in last night, but the other uh, uh, number of the people came in this morning. And of course, we're still witnessing more people as these messages are uh, being received received and they're being sent by the Israeli army to the civilians to tell them to evacuate their homes. Yeah, it's it's incredible, isn't it? I, you know, you're talking about people who fled their homes there. What is it like with this sense of the impending action, Israeli action, that is doubtless coming at some point? How are Gazans, how are you feeling about what's looking to be about to happen? Well, there's a very high sense of fear and, and worry among the people here. I mean, just right here in this school where I'm standing, there is a police station. Now, this is just a governmental police station. But the people here are afraid that this police station, which is just opposite to their uh, to the school, to this Ottawa school, could be targeted without prior notice, like what we have been uh, witnessing the past few hours so yes they are here because they are they were forced to evacuate their homes but at the same time there is no sense of uh, there's no sense that they are safe there is no sense that they are protected in this uh, shelter that they were forced to come into all right thanks uh, Yumna children in the middle of it right there behind you Yumna, thanks a lot. Uh, let's uh, head over to West Jerusalem. Sarah Haaretz is there for us. And uh, Sarah, so numbers of Israeli dead gone up to 600 and more, at least 600. Uh, have the Israeli government said anything about this yet? I mean, they, the number keeps increasing every few hours. And as Rob was saying, we're expecting that will continue to go up. Of course, no one imagined that there would be that number of casualties. However, uh, just uh, news that's come in that the Israeli cabinet has uh, approved uh, what's considered a war clause uh, to go ahead. What that means is that Israel can then take significant what they call military action, i.e. that would lead to war. It does have to uh, be confirmed by a Knesset committee tomorrow. We do know that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made that very clear on multiple occasions on Saturday when all this happened, saying that we are at war. But what that means is, is that it just makes it more legally binding. It also means that the Prime Minister, as well as the Defence Minister, won't need to consult the Cabinet every time they want to take military decisions. So that's the latest in terms of high-level approvals from the government. Also, we've heard from uh, the Israeli uh, military that there seems to have been uh, some uh, initiative coming from neighbouring country Egypt with Hamas to allow the release of uh, those Israeli citizens, as, uh, as, as specifically they were talking about citizens that, will, that were taken over the border on Saturday into Gaza. They're talking of those of specific ages, babies, children and the elderly. Israel says it's not part of that initiative, but it's no surprise that Egypt being a neighbouring country that always uh, is the first, one of the first countries when these things happen here, or there is tension or fighting or a flare in violence, or as we see a war, they will always try and come in and negotiate or try and bring parties together. There's also been a phone call from uh, the Jordanian uh, president to his Egyptian counterpart, where they've agreed that tensions need to, to uh, uh, the situation needs to de-escalate. And that would mean uh, a, a request almost to Israel to uh, not uh, go as far as um, it seems to be heading in that direction, to reconsider the amount of force uh, that it will use against Gaza, considering that it's uh, such a densely populated area. Now, a, in terms of looking forward, uh, what the... Yeah. 
I was going to say, in terms of moving forward, specifically when it comes to its military plan, nothing is clear just yet. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of uh, conversations amongst people whether Israel will send uh, foot soldiers in, for example. However, that remains quite tricky, simply because of those uh, people that have been held captive, whether it's soldiers or whether it's civilians in Gaza. So uh, Israel is going to want to make sure that their safety is paramount. They can't come back with dead bodies, if you like. Um, there's also been, we've been hearing of incidences uh, just in the last hour as well of two Palestinians that they caught Palestinian fighters in one of the areas in the south along that border. They've made arrests, several, of, several arrests throughout the day. And that's significant and interesting because in the past, uh, the Israeli, and, and not just in the past, I mean, we see this every day when it comes to Palestinians or anyone that they deem as a Palestinian fighter or armed and armed Palestinian, they tend to uh, shoot them on the spot. But this hasn't been happening. They have um, been making arrests. Some of those are dead. They've said 300 to 400 Hamas fighters have been killed, but they are also making arrests. And that leads to a question of, what do they plan to do with those that have been arrested? Obviously, it has happened where Israelis have been uh, kidnapped. Gad Shalit was a huge, uh, uh, big deal a few years ago. And could that be used as a bargaining chip where there will be a change of uh, prisoners or those that are held captive? All of this remains to be seen. Right now, Israel is working on making sure they get rid of the uh, Palestinian fighters, they say. That's their priority, evacuating people along that southern border. And then figuring out what the next step is, of course, in terms of Hezbollah and Lebanon. They will not want this to escalate, uh, to, to, which is what, exactly what the Egyptian president and Jordanian president saying that they don't want it to destabilise the region. And that's why they are keen to de-escalate tensions right now. Indeed. Sarah, we're going to leave it there for now. Thanks very much, Sarah Hart, there. Thank you.